There's an epidemic in the NFL right now. It's called mediocrity. And unfortunately today, there are far too many teams that are stuck in mediocrity. So today, let's talk about the 10 NFL teams that are stuck in mediocrity. Now, in order for us to actually discuss the 10 teams that I have in my list, we must first term what mediocrity means in the sense of the NFL. And while everyone has their own personal way of defining mediocrity, for me, mediocrity in the NFL is a team that cannot win the Super Bowl, but is also not bad enough to have a top five pick. These are teams that have been bad to mediocre to good for the past several years but have never taken that next step so as an example a team like the kansas city chiefs are not considered mediocre because well they've won plenty of super bowls when they had alex smith i think it is pretty easy to say that they were within the mediocre category because they could not get the job finished so i think you guys get my point let's go ahead and start off with my 10 nfl teams and these are not going to be in any particular order we will begin with the washington commanders I term the Washington Commanders to be mediocre because, yes, they are bad enough to have a second overall pick in this year's draft, but ever since RG3, has this team done anything of significance to make you think that they are going to be legit contenders within the next five years? Like, yes, they made the playoffs with Taylor Heineke, but then they got bounced in the first round. And sure, Drake May can come in here and fix this team up, but if he doesn't do that, I think this team is stuck in mediocrity for quite some time. This is a team that had to sell a ton of assets this current season, and as it sits right now, I don't see this team really taking that next step. So for now, I term them as mediocre. The next team on my list is going to be the Tennessee Titans. Yes, this team has Will Levis and seemingly has some things going for them, but then they fired Mike Rabel, who is arguably a top 15, a top 10 coach in the NFL. And based off a lot of rumors, it appears they fired him because they were mad that he liked the New England Patriots. And well, if that's the reason why you're firing a top 10 coach, then I think that tells you everything you need to know about the franchise. Sure, this team has a decent defense. They have DeAndre Hopkins, Will Levis, and maybe Derrick Henry if he returns. But they're stuck in that we might make the playoffs range. And let's say they do hypothetically make the playoffs. Are they going to win a game or make that run to make it to a Super Bowl? Hell no. But they're also just good enough to not have a top 10 pick continuously. That, in my opinion, is sort of the definition of mediocre. The next team on my list are the Cleveland Browns. Now, this might seem a little bit unfair, but I think the Cleveland Browns before Baker Mayfield were basically in the more bad category than the mediocre category. Let's be honest, this team was going from bad quarterback to bad quarterback to bad quarterback, and they weren't winning a whole lot of games. It wasn't really till Baker Mayfield got drafted and this team sort of turned it around to become a pretty decent team. But since Baker Mayfield's been drafted, they've just been kind of stuck in that mediocre range. Yes, they might make it to the playoffs here and there, but once they do, are they going to do anything? And I say it's a little bit unfair because had Deshaun Watson been healthy, I think this team potentially could have made a run in the playoffs this year. But in my opinion, Joe Flacco was playing a little bit better than Deshaun Watson as it is. So I don't really know if Deshaun would have done a whole lot. I understand this team has a top five defense in the NFL, but I mean, CJ Stroud in his first ever season made that defense look pretty damn bad. And when you look at the future of this team, I mean, there's some bright spots on it, but there's also a ton of questions and they don't really have a whole lot of solutions to those questions. I mean, they don't have the cap space they don't have the draft capital they don't really have what you need to fill in your questions i think the only way this team can genuinely get out of that mediocre conversation is if deshaun watson turns back to being that houston texans guy but i'll be honest with you i think that deshaun watson we once knew is kind of gone at this point so for now i think it's pretty hard to categorize them as anything else but just mediocre moving on let's go ahead and talk about the denver broncos and this basically has started ever since peyton manning has retired we obviously know they were not able to take any quarterback and develop them to become the next guy for Denver and when they traded for Russell Wilson it seemingly was an easy transition from them to take a already talented roster to have a quarterback who's won Super Bowls and been to playoff games like Russell Wilson but ever since the Russell Wilson trade they haven't even made the playoffs and this is a pretty talented roster overall so I do think this team has a bit of a bright future but at the same time their future is super handicapped by Russell Wilson and what they decide to do at that quarterback position and ever since Peyton Manning's been retired they've been just good enough to win six to nine games a year but never good enough to win 10 plus games per season and be consistent with it and when they do have high enough draft picks they typically draft fairly well but they don't really develop them and develop the team around them to really do anything of significance so for me i think this team is sort of stuck in mediocrity with no real clear vision ahead to move them out of this mediocre spot but now moving on let's talk about the next team and this team is actually in a very bad situation and that is the new orleans saints we obviously know that the new orleans saints are just good enough to win about eight to nine games per season they have a good defense, some decent pieces on the offense, but they have a very mediocre quarterback in Derek Carr. Sure, Derek Carr can turn it on sometimes and be a top 10 level quarterback on some days, but most days he's a top 30 quarterback. And unlike most teams that
that suck? This team doesn't really have any cap space. At this current point, they have negative $70 million, which is, uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Now, this team is decently built, and they have some good things going for them with some young guys like Chris Olave. So I think if this team can figure some stuff out, it could get kind of nice. But let's be honest, the front office has shown no ability to really turn things around anytime soon. These are the same front office guys who just kept Dennis Allen for another year, despite the fact that Dennis Allen has shown no improvement year after year after year. And these are the same guys who also decided to bring Derek Carr in, knowing how bad their cap space situation was. So like most people, I think the New Orleans Saints are basically doomed to be very bad for the next five plus years. So if I had to guess which of these teams can move out of the mediocre category, I'd say it's the Saints because they can move to the bad category pretty fast. The next team we're going to talk about is the New York Giants. If you want to look at a mediocre franchise, just look at the New York Giants. Let me ask you guys this. How long have we been saying this Giants team needs to address the receiving room and the offensive line? I think it's basically been since Odo Beckham left this team that they have needed to address those spots. Yet here we are in 2024 and in my mock draft, I'm giving the New York Giants another offensive tackle. This is one of those franchises franchises that sure, they can continue to get top 10 picks, but whenever they take these top 10 picks, they don't really do much with them. I mean, let's look back at all their first round picks these past couple seasons. In 2015, they took Eric Flowers, who is obviously one of the biggest disappointments in NFL history. I know he had some good moments at guard there in Washington, but uh, yeah, he was bad for the Giants. Their next season pick in 2016 was Eli Apple, and well, I don't think I have to tell you guys a whole lot about that. In 2017, they took Evan Ingram, and Evan Ingram really didn't start popping off till he joined the Jacksonville Jaguars. 2018, with their second overall pick, they took Saquon Barkley, which after a couple of injuries has played pretty well. But is he really worth the value of the number two pick? I mean, maybe he's been really good, but running back? I don't know. Then infamously in 2019, they got super aggressive and took Daniel Jones, number six, Dexter Lawrence, number 17, and DeAndre Baker, number 30. And Daniel Jones is one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the NFL. DeAndre Baker is out of the league. And well, Dexter Lawrence is actually a really good player. Then in 2020, they took Andrew Thomas. So hey, that's a good pick right there. 2021, Kadarius Tony is not even on the team anymore. Kayvon Thibodeau in 2022, I would say he's definitely an arising player who has a lot of talent. In that same draft, number seven, they took Evan Neal, and he is arguably the worst tackle in the entire NFL. And then lastly, in 2023, they took Deontay Banks with the 24th overall pick, which I think he has some talent for him. So of the 12 first round picks they took, only Saquon Barkley, Dexter Lawrence, Andrew Thomas, Kayvon Thibodeau, and maybe Deontay Banks have turned out to be really anything in the NFL. That right there is called mediocrity. Next up, we are going to talk about the New York Giants' right the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys are stuck in this area where they can win 12 games a year and look damn good and scary throughout the whole regular season, but once they face a good team or go in the playoffs, they usually get smoked. This past year was basically the entire synopsis of what has been going on with the Dallas Cowboys. Blowing out bad teams like the New England Patriots, the New York Giants, the Washington Commanders, so on and so forth. And in their three toughest games against the San Francisco 49ers, the Buffalo Bills, and the Green Bay Packers, this team was a no-show. So sure, yes, keep doing what you're doing. Keep winning 12 games a season, but yes, you're going to be first round to second round exits every single year. And what makes this team even more mediocre is the simple fact that they're going to stick with their guns. Dak Prescott will be on the team next year. Mike McCarthy will also be on the team next year year and more than likely so will Dan Quinn. So the cycle will run again next year. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. And well, there's not a whole lot to say here. This is a team that is going to win 9 to 11 games per season and continuously make the playoffs. But once they get in the playoffs, they're basically doomed to get destroyed by 30 plus points every single time. And that's because Mike Tomlin is a good enough coach who can will this team to being a very good team in the regular season. But once it comes down to talent versus talent and less scheme versus scheme, they're going to continuously get blown out. And what's really weird about this Pittsburgh team is that they've had really good talent for several years now. But basically ever since Juju Smith-Schuster joined this team, or I guess was one on this team, they've really been super mediocre ever since. Like I said, this team makes it to the playoffs and then they're going to get bounced every single time. Yet, despite all that, this team is going to continue to stick with Kenny Pickett. And I think the funny thing about it is, it seems like Steelers fans want to keep Kenny Pickett. Despite Kenny Pickett being totally garbage whenever he plays, there still seems to be a very strong amount of people who still have faith that he can be the franchise quarterback. And to me, that reeks of a team and a fan base that just loves mediocrity. Now, before I mention my 10th team of this video, I did want to bring up a couple other teams that are really close to being in this video, but just a little bit of ways from being there. And those teams are the Atlanta Falcons, the Minnesota Vikings, the Seattle Seahawks, and the Miami Dolphins. These are teams that I think can still make some moves this offseason to finally get out of the mediocre range, but I also just want to give them one more year to change my mind about them before I actually fully categorize them as mediocre. For example, it seemed like the Atlanta Falcons might just be a quarterback away from being damn good, but if this franchise decides they're going to stick around and keep Desmond Ritter as their quarterback, well, they'll be mediocre. 
you guys probably get my point. Teams like Miami, Seattle, Minnesota, I'm going to give them one more year before I actually categorize them as mediocre. But lastly, our last team we're going to talk about today is the LA Chargers, a team that consistently misses the playoffs despite having a top five and generational quarterback in Justin Herbert. This is the same team that took, what, 12 weeks to fire Brandon Staley? The same head coach that has only made the playoff one time with Justin Herbert, and in that one game, they blew a massive lead. And this is all stemming down from the front office. The front office is the core incompetency of this team. They are the reason to blame for all this. This is a pretty decent roster these past couple years, yet they have nothing to show for it. And yet they kept sticking with their guns and sticking with their players, and they have nothing to show for it. This is the same front office and the same organization that wasted Philip Rivers, LaDainian Tomlinson, and Antonio Gates. And I hate to say it, it appears they just wasted Austin Eckler and Keenan Allen's careers as well. And I think Justin Herbert might be next, so he might want to be careful. So that, everybody, is my mediocre video. If you guys have any additions you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section below. And if you liked it, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. But I love you guys. Peace.